So, the Earth isn't actually round. And Mount Everest is not the highest point on the planet. Okay, let's break this down. We're used to seeing images of the Earth as a perfectly rounded sphere. Like this, or this, or this. But that's wrong. Before you say it, no, it's not flat either. While we had a few interesting guesses in the beginning, we've actually known the Earth isn't flat since around the 5th century BC, thanks to ancient Greek philosophers and mathematicians. But it wasn't until around 1200 years later that Sir Isaac Newton first exclaimed that the Earth is not perfectly round. It's actually what's called an oblate spheroid. The best way to describe it is as a rugby football the short axis being the rotation axis about which the Earth spins, and the long axis lying in the equatorial plane. And it turns out there's a big difference between round and round-ish. If you measured the Earth's diameter from the North to the South Pole, you'd actually get a different number compared to measuring the diameter around the equator. A difference of just over 42 kilometers. The equator is bulging outwards. That means that a person standing on the equator is about 20 kilometers closer to the moon than someone at the North Pole, which makes the equator very good for stargazing. Okay, in the grand scheme of things, that's not a huge difference, but it is enough to ensure that Everest is not actually the highest point on Earth. There's a reason you probably thought that Everest was the highest mountain on Earth, but that's only because typically we measure mountains from sea level and if you measure from the absolute center of the Earth instead, then Everest is no longer in first place. That prize goes to Mount Chimborazo in Ecuador. And Everest isn't even in the top three, it's 10th. Mount Chimborazo gets a massive height boost from the Earth's imperfect shape, thanks to being only about one degree from the equator. This means it's more than 2,000 meters further away from the center of the Earth than Everest. So why is the Earth this shape? Well, the main reason for this not exactly round shape is because of the Earth's rotation. The planet's constant spinning makes it bulge at the equator, thanks to a centrifugal force that pushes outwards at the center when an object spins. And that force is bigger at the equator than at the poles. We can measure the shape of the Earth, we can measure its gravity field thanks to satellite technology. The satellite's orbit is determined in the first instance by the attraction of the Earth on that satellite. So if we can track a satellite precisely, what we will see is that its orbit isn't a nice elliptical, but you'll see little wiggles on it. The imperfect orbit of satellites tells us a lot about the imperfect surface below. It tells you that somewhere underneath that satellite at that time, there is a density anomaly that there is either an excess of mass or a deficit of mass compared to our ideal shape. This shows us that while Earth is certainly not a perfect sphere, it's also not a perfect oblate spheroid either. The peaks of mountains and volcanoes and the troughs of craters and canyons all play into the shape of the Earth. But even accounting for that, keeping on top of the true shape of the Earth is trickier than it might seem. And that's because it's not a fixed shape. It's changing its shape all the time on different time scales and by different amounts. But on the short time scale, a good example is every 12 hours the ocean tides repeat themselves. These tides are associated with redistributions of mass and the shape of the Earth changes accordingly by something like 20 centimeters, for example. That means it's not just the tides that go up and down, but also the ground you're standing on now. And understanding how much and how often it changes shape is integral to, well, just about the entire modern world. From weather tracking to time zones to maps and GPS itself. And now that system, because there are so many satellites up there, so you had this great surfeit of observations. So from these, you could determine your positions in real time effectively. And nowadays we can do that at sort of centimeter accuracy. Our planet acts like a living organism, dynamically moving and changing in both the short and long term. We've come a long way since we first called the Earth round. Now we can scientifically say it's round 
ish. <laughs>